Hello, Matt. It is Thursday, the 20-something of May. And you're probably wondering, why the hell can't you see me? Well, that's because... I'm recording later than I should be. Uh, yeah. Time is 21.38. And I've been half-term. I've been revising, but it's half-term. And I should really have had a lot more time, but I didn't take that time. Instead I've been focusing most of my effort on a Burton career mode and random YouTube ventures into the weird part of YouTube. I found this YouTuber called, uh, I don't know what it's called, but he does random videos about like overloading electronics and creating x-rays and he's just a drunk high person that just loves electricity and that results in great comedy and stuff. I've been looking at my old videos recently, I don't know why, but just my old videos I've just been looking at. And I think probably the greatest moment I've come across is this. Oh, it might not be. Yes! Oh, oh, scored! The fact that I thought FIFA 13 was so difficult, um, and I scored a 90 minute winner. Um, yeah, the catch quality wasn't very good. Um, also in these ventures, I discovered in my Crash Bandicoot walkthrough, a part that I've made unlisted today actually has um, a little bit where my mum talked to me. Um, I think it was part 8, I think. But it's unlisted now, so you can't watch it. So, yeah, I'm really, I'm not impressed with the Crash Bandicoot walkthrough, and I'm probably going to redo that in the summer, because I don't, I wasn't impressed with it. For the Stone walkthrough I was impressed with, well, for the most part. Um, a little chess game I could have done better, but yeah, I was, for the most of it, I was impressed with how I did it, how I got through the game at Crash Bandicoot. I'd say that wasn't the best run of me completing the game, um, and also there were a lot of interferences during that walkthrough. So I'm going to do it again in the summer break. Hey, right, it is Thursday and it is a movie review, and because I've had half term, I've not really thought about reviewing a movie. Worry, I will get round to reviewing iRobot sometime. Uh, it's only going to have more time. I've not really watched any movies um, in it, so yeah, I'm just going to get through it. You know, like right now, bang, get out my product. I don't know what I'm saying. The problem is, I need to think of a movie to review first. Uh, nothing could beat the poster there, um, so. Not even the best reviewer, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what movie I'm going to review. Last week it was El Dorado as an emergency review. This week it's going to be... <laughs> I don't want this vlog to be as long as my uh, last couple of vlogs. I've just gone on and on and on about movie in question, so, yeah. My brain's just dead. I've done so much revision, it's just dead. I just can't think. I can't think of a movie, but I don't want to get punished. Oh, Punishment, yes. About the Punishment, I know you're thinking about that. Okay, right, I've not recorded the Mama B yet. I should have. I, every time I have free time, I don't capitalise on it. So I'm going to record that tomorrow and upload it tomorrow. Mark my words, it will be out tomorrow. Mark my freaking words, it will be out tomorrow. And I'm going to have eight spoonfuls of Vegemite, not Marmite, but it's pretty much the same thing. So I'm not going to have a spoonful of salt because it kind of interferes with the Punishment in question, so yeah, eight spills of Vegemite and bang, done. That the whole bit yeah. the whole bit's right like a book I see um up there. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna read the first part of the Hobbit and then I'm gonna review the next couple of parts over the next couple of weeks. Oh no, this might be a one off Hobbit review, so I'm gonna review the first Hobbit movie and Unexpected Journey today. And yeah, it's not going to be a very interesting review because I've not seen the movie since it came out in cinemas, but um, yeah, you can just skip ahead to the end of the vlog. Alright, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, focuses on Bill Bay Baggins, who is a obviously known for Lord of the Rings as the old uh, version of Frodo. Now he is the younger, um, old version of Frodo. Um, which, yeah, I'm just going to put out there, I think Martin Freeman is so much better than playing a sort of like 30 year old Hobbit than Elijah Wood. I just could put it out there. He is. He um, gets a visit from Gandalf. He says he needs someone to help him with this um, quest uh, to recover an old city. 
uh, Bilbo agrees, and then a load of dwarfs come by, and you find out who they are, kind of, uh, the company is, and then they go off on their journey to the city, and that's pretty much the thing of the three films. First film is they are going to the city, second film, well, first film they get halfway to the city, second film they get to the other half, third film they try and re like, keep hold of the city. So these dwarves are a load of um, mischievous ones, if you know Gimli from Lord of the Rings, you know, about half of them. But then there's obviously um, uh, Thorin, who is dignified, and there's a, a lot of couple that are kind of dignified and good fires. Um, and they're kind of entertaining, but they're not really very memorable. I think Dwarfs and the Hobbit are... they should have only had like seven of them. I mean, I know in the book there were 14. But I think they should have only stuck with seven or six. Here's what I think you should have had. Thorin. Thorin's a crucial dwarf. Um, uh, Philly and Killy, they're kind of also pretty important. Because Philly's involved in a love in the second third uh, movies. And Killy is also a bit of fun to be around. There's an old one. I don't know his name. But he's kind of important because he talks to Bilbo a lot. There's Twalind, who is a um, like fighter. Second in command pretty much. And there's um, all the rest are pretty much the same. They're all kind of like Gimli, so I think you should have had like one of them, and then that's it. And then obviously Bilbo and Gandalf, and yeah, that's all for the first movie. Just eight characters in the first movie. So think about like um, Star Wars. There was Luke, Han, Leia, Obi Wan. Off topic. Okay, so they should have only had that many. So they go on a journey and they meet a load of weird, wacky characters, and they are on being chased down by Azog, that's his name, an orc who is ties with Thorin for cutting off his arm. Thor isn't that much, it's not a load of story for it. Um, the thing that makes this movie though is the characters. Um, there's a load of interesting conversations between Gandalf and Bilbo and Thorin, and B basically Bilbo's the centre of all this, but he really doesn't actually pay, he really doesn't actually um, put anything to the story if you think about it. They could have just gone on a journey, I mean yeah Bilbo is kind of important in the second movie, I think that's the one they're most important of in... I'm really lost for words today, I can't get my words out. So yeah Bilbo does, is kind of the centre of conversation but not really centre of the story. Um, he's like the c 3 pure of it, you see it through the lowest eyes but he does gain respect throughout the movie. And there's a few good action scenes um, and just the effects are very good. But then you meet, uh, what's his name, um, uh, no, what's his, Sylvester McCoy's character, uh, oh, I should remember, I should know his name, uh, no, I don't know his name, he's the brown wizard. Yeah, he's the Jar Jar Binks of it all, he is really annoying, and I've got to admit, yeah, he is kind of annoying. Not as annoying as people say it is, but I think he kind of lets the movie down because he appears in a fair bit of the movie, and then the next two he also appears in. Uh, so I don't really get that. You know, it's a bit journey not reviewing the whole Hobbit trilogy because that would take forever, and uh, there are very different opinions for all three of the movies. The main complaint I have about this one though is it's boring. Holy crap, it's boring. They basically you wait 45 minutes to actually go on a journey. Uh, well, the first 10 minutes is all backstory. Then the next 20 minutes is with um, Bilbo and Gandalf. Then 10 minutes are that is the dwarves. The singing's alright, but that's pretty much the highlight of the whole first quarter of it. Then they go on their journey, walk about a little bit, go to sleep, get kidnapped, and then they get rescued. Kind of a good action scene. They go to Rivendell, which is like the capital, the Elven capital, and they say a load of mission stuff and uh, yeah, that's kind of boring as well. You don't really get into an action scene until you meet the brown wizard. And, yeah, it does drag. At least, at least, there's a good segue into the second part, because at the end of the movie they do end on a, not a evil cliffhanger, unlike the next part. But, yeah, they, they end on a kind of a cliffhanger, but it's a cliffhanger as in, like, well... I'm going to talk about Lord of the Rings later on in this vlog series, but for now I'm going to say it's like those endings. Not overly evil endings, um, but they do draw you into a sequel. Yeah, that's pretty much The Hobbit Unexpected Journey. Not incredible. 
Um, a few good action scenes, good conversation, but it's boring, and the brown wizard kind of lets it down. And overall, just the setting, you have seen it before. Obviously, it does look a bit different, uh, because it's a bit before Lord of the Rings, 60 years. And there's a good amount of old and new between Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I think The Hobbit doesn't get the appreciation it deserves. So I'm going to say, I expect a journey, I'd say a 7 out of 10. Okay, that's the vlog done, pretty much. Now, I'm sorry this has been a bad vlog. I'm not going to lie, it's a very bad vlog, but um, I need to get out, really, because now I've been recording for 14 minutes and I've got to get it out. Anyway, Matt, it's my vlog tomorrow, I'll do the punishment and I will see you then.